because this is a new term for some people, can you give us a couple of examples of what we mean when we start to talk about intelligent systems? Sure. Uh, one example would be, uh, for example, an in-vehicle infotainment system, for, for example. Uh, BMW, for example, has uh, uh, <clears throat> these capabilities in their, in their cars where if you uh, uh, drive into a dealership in Germany, the system will upload your uh, information from your car to the dealership, <clears throat> allow them to understand what's uh, uh, what might be wrong with your car, help them diagnose issues with, with the car. So it's, again, it's not just an a, a independent system, but it's a, it has this uh, connectivity capability that allows it to connect to other systems, <clears throat> share information, uh, and, and provide uh, expanded capabilities. Mm. And just to be clear, this is not a new market for Intel. The company has been involved for 25 plus years in the development of embedded systems. Right, from the hardware side, it's been about 35 years that mm. Intel's been in, engaged in the embedded market. In the last uh, two and a half years alone, uh, we've seen over 12,000 design wins for in, embedded systems for, for Intel. Uh, we've got hundreds of variants of, of CPUs in the embedded systems. Uh, uh, from a software side, it's been 25 plus years Intel's been engaged. We've got uh, over 14,000 employees at Intel that develop software of a variety of types, whether it's uh, in the firmware drivers or in the OS, uh, software tools or security uh, that, uh, that participate in this space. <clears throat> and so this has been a pretty busy period the last couple of months. There's been some recent announcements about acquisitions and new products from Intel in space. Can you talk a little bit about what those are and what you're trying to accomplish with them? Sure. We've recently announced uh, the launch of a new product uh, called Intel System Studio. Uh, the uh, the first variant is Intel System Studio for Linux, which supports a variety of Linux environments. Uh, brings together a lot of capabilities in uh, debuggers, analyzers, performance tools that are specifically targeted for the the challenges that uh, uh, embedded system developers have. Hmm. And what are the three? Uh, you've talked about three major areas of focus, three value propositions, if you will. Uh, that you're trying to address with these tools. Could you talk uh, briefly about what each one of those is and, and perhaps give an example of the kinds of problems that you're trying to solve? Sure, with uh, with recent research and uh, talking to our, our customers, we found uh, uh, that uh, some of the, the three key value propositions or the challenges that uh, rise to the top of, of their concerns are uh, uh, <clears throat> time to market of their systems, uh, developing robust, reliable systems, and power efficiency and performance. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> these uh, are often ranked higher than um, um, the, the CPU, for example, or the, the microprocessor as a, as a design uh, uh, decision factor. Uh, in, the, um, in the area of time to market, uh, helping developers uh, bring these systems to market in a, in a um, uh, faster time to, to compete better. Uh, <clears throat> examples in that space are help them identify uh, bugs during the design cycle, for example, helping identify and resolve those in a timely fashion, get those resolved, <clears throat> and uh, uh, speed time to market. Reliability and robustness of the system, uh, for some of these embedded systems, is very important uh, uh, capability to, to have a very robust system. Uh, again, the analysis tools, debuggers that we have provide uh, uh, deep insights to the system to help them identify these issues, identify them, and, and solve them prior to release of the systems and, and do so in a timely fashion. And then in the performance and uh, power efficiency, uh, we have uh, tools that help analyze uh, power efficiency issues, uh, help identify where in the software or where in the stack that problems might be occurring to uh, that, are, that are draining battery life, for example, or uh, uh, tools, compilers, and libraries, for example, that uh, uh, help deliver better performance and whether or not performance is a direct value proposition for the, for the device uh, allows them to uh, support additional capabilities which improve the user experience of the, of the intelligence system. Hmm. So uh, Tyler, help us understand uh, as Intel expands its efforts in this area, the relative importance of uh, its focus on systems on chips or SOCs as you refer to them and focus on embedded products for traditional core processors. Well, what does that balance look like now? And is there a direction? Is it going to be both? Is it going to be a, a hybrid approach? We see the market moving to, uh, toward SOCs across the board. Uh, uh, more and more complex devices at, that uh, combine more and more capabilities into the system on a chip. It's, uh, uh, we see, we're seeing this across the board, not just embedded, but in some of our, uh, uh, obviously in our tablets and phone, phone, uh, phone systems, 
as well as some of our uh, server uh, server products. So mm. we see the, 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 the trend moving more and more in that direction. Opportunity for us to deliver more and more capabilities in the in the silicon, uh, not just the core uh, CPU, but the, all the, the IP that's around that, uh, <clears throat> which uh, provides more capability for the embedded device, but also uh, increases some of the developer uh, challenges for developing that device. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of the unique challenges that arise with this increasing focus on SOCs? Uh, debuggability is is, uh, is one. Uh, it's more, much more complex to debug that entire system on a chip. Uh, with events uh, and the hardware and software coming across the SOC, it's no longer as simple as the uh, you know, targeting a, sim a single CPU, single threaded, single core, and uh, debugging a you know, more simplistic si situation uh, where you've got <clears throat> this system on a chip with events uh, triggering across the across the SOC, trying to debug and, and understand uh, the interaction of all those events and, and uh, processing to uh, uh, identify and, and resolve the issues uh, from a debuggability robustness standpoint to identify bugs as well as from a power uh, power efficiency a power efficiency standpoint to identify what what might be happening in the software stack that is triggering things in the hardware that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> might be unexpected or at uh, too frequent a pace that, that uh, that's not expected that might be causing battery drain, for example, or performance issues. Uh, so it's uh, th that overall complexity of that device uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the challenges, uh, increase, the increase the challenges of debugging and, and uh, analyzing the power and performance efficiency. Mm -hmm. And where does Wind River fit into what Intel is trying to do now and going forward with this? So Wind River is a, a big part of this as well. Uh, they have uh, a key focus on operating systems for embedded devices as well as some tools. Uh, <clears throat> and we partner uh, to, to some degree on our, our tools as well. Our Intel System Studio that we launched supports Wind River uh, Linux and uh, uh, supports their efforts there. Uh, we expect them uh, 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 yeah. uh, in, in addition to that, we have uh, our Intel tools as part of their VxWorks uh, uh, OS offerings. Uh, and we work, work closely together to to uh, expand our capabilities for our tools and their OSs working together. Excellent. You know, one of the big stories of the last couple of years, obviously, you folks have driven it, has been the rising popularity of multi-core and multi-threaded systems. How, how has the rise of that technology changed what you folks are doing? So multi-core and multi-threading uh, capabilities that are being introduced or have been introduced are, are finding their way into mobile and embedded systems as well. Uh, it's uh, on one hand again adds more capabilities, more more performance, more capabilities that uh, that device can support. On the other hand, it increases the complexity of developing uh, uh, the, the threat safety and the threading issues between those uh, uh, in, in those devices. Our, our tools uh, have uh, capabilities for uh, helping identify threading issues, debugging threading issues, uh, <clears throat> uh, helping identify memory corruption issues, and those kinds of things that are. Uh, 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 possible in these in these environments. Excellent, exciting times ahead for sure. Yes, Charlie Houston, thank you so much. Thank you.